So I've been playing guitar for like more than 20 years now, and it just hit me the other day that I haven't yet shared with you this one secret that completely opened my eyes to so much more than the instrument itself. This is something I learned way too late in the game, and I really truly wish that I had known this when I first picked up guitar. And I'll tell you what it is in just a second, but first, I wanna share something with you that was revealed to me recently that really put everything into perspective, not just the guitar, but music in general. Music is made up of three pillars, melody, rhythm, and harmony. Now, some instruments that are used in music tend to favor one pillar over the rest. And when it comes to guitar, it greatly favors melody over everything else. I mean, think about it. Almost everything that we play on guitar really revolves around melody. The guitar loves scales, it loves solos, it also loves chords, but there is such a thing as chord melody. So the guitar is a very melody-focused instrument. So compare that to an instrument like the bass, which focuses more on rhythm as opposed to melody and harmony, or piano, which focuses mostly on harmony compared to rhythm and melody. But just because an instrument favors one of those pillars over the others doesn't mean that those other pillars are less important and that they shouldn't be bumped up. Which brings me to the thing that I wish I was told when I first picked up the guitar. It's to focus on rhythm. And I'm not talking about rhythm guitar, playing chords, that kind of thing. I'm talking about applying rhythm to everything that you play, including leads and solos. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, the best guitar players in the world have a strong sense of rhythm. Even when they're just sitting alone, noodling and playing the pentatonic scale, for example, they're doing it to a beat that you may not be able to hear, but just by the way that they play, you know it's there. So when I first started playing guitar, the very first scale that I learned which is probably the very first scale that you learned, or one of the first, was the A minor pentatonic scale. All right, so if you don't already know it, it's fifth fret on the low E string, then eighth fret, then it's five and seven on the A string, five and seven on the D string, five and seven on the G string, five eight on the B string, and five eight on the high E string. Now, when I first learned that scale, I wish that there was someone there on day one to tell me, Eddie, if you keep playing that scale that way, you're never gonna make music with it. What you need to do is apply rhythm to the notes in that scale. So I'm gonna give you a very simple example of how you can apply a sense of rhythm to something as simple as the A minor pentatonic scale. And what this will do, even though it's a simple start, is it'll set you up. It'll set you up on this trajectory to where you'll start to prioritize your sense of rhythm so that when you're playing uh, the different scales and stuff, you're gonna have increasingly more complex and interesting rhythms that you apply to the notes. But you gotta start somewhere, and that's exactly where we're gonna start right now. That simple example shows you that when you apply rhythm to something as simple as a scale, it no longer feels mechanical like you're just exercising a scale. You're actually applying rhythm to it, which kind of makes it more musical and it makes it more thematic. And this is just the start, right? There's all kinds of places that you can go from here, but I want you to get used to playing your scales in a way like this so that you're not just walking up and down the scales. So let's break down what I just did. I started off by playing the first note in the A minor pentatonic scale, fifth fret low E string, and I played it twice. Then I played the eighth fret twice on the same string. Then fifth fret on the A string twice. And then seventh fret on the A string twice. So I was ascending the scale in the order of those first four notes, but I was adding, you know, by picking them tw uh, each note twice, it kind of gave it this sort of flowing rhythm. All right, and then in the second measure, what I did was, so I, I essentially did the same thing, right? I started off fifth fret on low E, play it twice, then eighth fret on low E, play it twice, and then fifth fret on A, play it once and, and hold it out to give you some breathing room, you know, which leads to the next measure, which is pretty much the same thing. Right, so again, it's about creating a theme. This is part of how music is built, right? Uh, with motif. So we are, uh, we play that first part. Then the second part where we hold out that one note. Then we repeat that first measure again. But then on the fourth measure, we wanna change it up a little bit, so we do this. Oh, 
There we go. So we start with the fifth fret on the D string, and then we play seventh fret on A, and then fifth fret on A, and then back to seventh fret on A, and then we play the fifth fret on low E and just hold it out for a second. So that it's like creating musical sentences, right? And those four measures are so repeatable. So you could continue to repeat those almost like it's a simple kind of riff. But I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to incorporate the rest of the scale. So I just made little phrases with the remaining notes. So what I did was starting with the uh, seventh fret on the D string, we're going to go uh, uh, seventh fret to fifth fret on the D string, then seventh fret on A, then fifth fret on D, back to seventh fret on A. So this little phrase. So you can consider every everything that we learned from this point uh, forward its own little phrase that you can mix and match. You can you know cut and paste wherever you want. You know these are just kind of outside of the main rhythm that we were doing, but this is still kind of following that same motif, that same rhythm, right? Uh, so that's that first phrase, and then the next phrase we're going to be uh, seventh fret on the G string, and then fifth fret, and then seventh fret on D, and then fifth fret on D. Back to seventh fret. So we're going. And then the next phrase, we start with the seventh fret on the G string, and then fifth fret on B, then eighth fret on B, then back to fifth fret on B, and then eighth fret. So the phrase here is. And then finally, with the last grouping of notes, the phrase we start with the fifth fret on the high E string and then 8th fret of the B string, and then 5-8-5 five, five on high E. So each of those little phrases are... Um, so even though this example sounds very simple, imagine the type of guitar player you would be if the first thing you learned after learning the A minor pentatonic scale, for example, is to play it with rhythm like that. Everything you would come up with subsequently as you got better as a guitar player would only be better and better and cooler and cooler, and you would never find yourself in that trap where you're just playing up and down the pentatonic scale, which, you know, unfortunately is an epidemic amongst most guitar players. So if you find yourself in that situation, or if you're just trying to get into playing the pentatonic scale, for example, really apply some rhythm to it. And, you know, playing to a metronome is, is very valuable and important and something you should be doing. But, you know, what I just came up with, you can just work at it at your own pace and then make sure that it's at an even rhythm. You know, and in the beginning, the way it starts, you know, it's kind of a driving rhythm. So it almost inherently forces you to find that rhythmic center and then just keep going with it. And then when you start to add those little phrases, you're kind of keeping that flow going. Even if you don't have a click track, or even if you're not even tapping your own foot, it's kind of how you build that internal clock, which is another very important thing you need to have as a guitar player. And I'd say another important thing that I wish someone told me when I first picked it up is to build your internal clock fast instead of having to wait until I was already five, six years into playing before I realized how important that was. So now that you've watched this lesson and you've learned about the three pillars of music, how they apply to guitar, and what pillar you need to put more focus on as a guitar player, now is the time to add that to your list of priorities. Because with great power comes great responsibility. No pressure. Seriously though, by applying rhythm to everything that you play on guitar, especially early on, it's going to set you on a crazy trajectory as you get better. It's going to take you to unforeseen levels of guitar skill that you may have not even dreamed of reaching before because that's how important your sense of rhythm is. And not to mention, if you want to get in the game as a professional guitar player, your sense of rhythm really determines your value in the marketplace, and that is not a joke. And now that I have bestowed upon you this great power that I wish I had when I was first starting out, I want to make sure that you add this to your playing style without a hitch. And that's why I'm giving you a free survey that'll tell you exactly what your number one guitar progress killer is. In just 30 seconds, you're going to find out what it is that's been holding you back from playing the things that you want to play on guitar, which is very important to learn, especially when you're applying a new tactic like this. So be sure to click here to take that survey or check the link in the description box.
And if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and be sure to check out our other relevant lessons right over here. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.